All right, with talks of a recession coming up, I've got a few tips that may help recession-proof your business. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley and Crafted, and today we're gonna to be talking about trying to recession-proof your business, or at least getting yourself prepared for what may happen this coming year. Now, I will say before I start this video, I'm going off of what I see kind of happening in the news, paying attention to a lot of podcasts that deal with business, and listening to a lot of other businesses talk about what is happening, or what has happened in the past six months, and what they think is gonna happen in the next six to eight months. So definitely take a lot of this with a grain of salt. These are just some quick tips that uh, I've started to do myself and some tips that I've seen or heard from other people, other business people who I respect, uh, who have been doing this a hell of a lot longer, some of the things that they're running into. So I figured I would pass some of those tips down to the people that watch this channel because it could help uh, kind of ride the wave that this year may potentially be. Now, I know for me with the candle business, the YouTube channel, uh, the supplies, uh, selling the oils and basically everything I'm doing, I have seen a downturn in sales across the board. Uh, I've seen a downturn in revenue from the channel, from the candle supplies, and some of those are my fault also. Obviously the channel, I haven't been making as many videos last year, so that just naturally went down. Uh, but as far as like selling the candle supplies, selling the fragrance oils, those have definitely dipped in the past four or five months. And the reason I'm a little bit more concerned is because we're already going into kind of a dip in candle season anyway. Uh, anybody new to the channel, if you're unfamiliar with candles and the candle business, uh, the peak candle season is definitely more towards fall and winter. Once we start hitting August all the way through even January, it's still a pretty high season. That's where you're going to see the most sales for most candle companies. And during the spring and summer, you're going to see a little bit of a dip. But like I said, on top of that, there's talks of a recession. So people are starting to hold back a little bit more. So these are some things I've got probably, I don't know, maybe six or eight different tips right here that can kind of help. Uh, get people through the down times. And these are definitely things that I'm putting to use in my own business. Uh, first off is going to be cash reserves. If you listen to any finance person out there, they always tell you this. Any small business owner, they always say, keep cash on hand. And whether that's an extra $100 or an extra $1,000 or $10,000, definitely try to keep as much hand on possible, which means spending less where you don't need to. Having cash on hand so that if something comes up, a good sale comes up, or if you're getting into a market or anything like that, you've got cash on hand and you don't have to go into debt, credit card debt, to do something like this. All right, number two is going to be talking to partners, vendors, suppliers. Now, this one is not going to go across the board. Not all vendors or suppliers will do this, but it is a good idea to reach out to almost anybody. I know for myself in selling candle supplies now, I've had several people reach out to me and order smaller quantities, but still get a good deal. So there are there are vendors and suppliers out there. Uh, if you're ordering 100 units, 1,000 units, 10,000 units at a particular price, you might be able to talk to those vendors and suppliers and get a lower amount. So instead of 100, maybe getting 50, uh, 1,000, 500, 10,000, 5,000, you might be able to get a much smaller amount at the same or very close to that discount that you're already getting. Uh, number three is gonna be putting off any big investments. I know for myself, I've got a lot of things that I'd like to get for the fragrance oil business, for the candle supply business, uh, some machines that'll help make things a little bit more efficient, but I'm putting those off for right now as long as I can because I want that money kind of focused elsewhere. So I would definitely tell people, hold off on big purchases. If you're looking for, uh, like say if you're looking for a third, a second or third melter, if it's going to help you make your current candles that much quicker, that's a necessary purchase, I believe. But if you're looking to have three or four so that you can just run two, three, four different waxes just because it's convenient, I would probably hold off on something like that and keep that money focused elsewhere. Now, this one's not gonna speak to all of the small candle business owners a little bit more. This is gonna be for candle companies that have employees, uh, whether that's two, four, 20, whatever it is. If you can figure out ways to create kind of creative schedule or alternative schedules, uh, instead of having two, three, four people working all day long if you can do two and two, or if you know the times when you're trying to package up stuff in the beginning. So let's say you normally have four people in the morning packaging up orders as quick as possible so that they can ship by one, two o'clock or whenever UPS or whoever comes by to pick stuff up. If you can get by with three or even two people, 
basically work those people around so that you're still being efficient, still getting stuff out, but you're not having extra hands where you don't need them. And again, that's going to be different for every single business because who's busy at what times uh, and when UPS picks up and when they don't is going to be different for all businesses. But anything you can do or anywhere you can go to get a little bit creative to still keep the people and because there are a lot of layoffs happening. So anything you can do, if you've got employees that don't need full hours or if they can go part time for a little bit or if they can do evenings or mornings, uh, definitely try to find the ones that can do that and work with them. So again, you're not putting money out there where it doesn't need to be. And on top of that one, the next one is going to be building up employee skills. Uh, if you've got one or two employees, and again, this is for candle companies that have a few more employees, a little bit bigger, but if you've got people who stick to one area in the shop and they're just pouring oils all day, uh, if you've got one or two employees that just make the candles and you've got other ones that pour oils, box stuff up, uh, if you can, obviously cross training is going to be a big thing for any, for any company, but if you can get people to do multiple positions, uh, that's going to help. And again, if you do have downtime with employees, uh, it's good to have an employee that can go immediately from pouring candles to right over and taking pictures for Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, anything like that. And they just transition right into a second or third position and just get running with that. And again, if you're a sole candle maker, you're going to end up doing this on your own anyway, but it's always a good idea to, even for yourself, learn new skills so that you can take over things and not have to hire somebody to do them. And speaking of Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, this is where it's going to become even more crucial to pay attention to your analytics. And that is looking at your website. If you're on Shopify, you can go to their analytics page. You can see where the bulk of your sales are coming in from, where whether it's direct Google search, uh, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever it is, if you see 30, 40% coming from one avenue, definitely focus on that one and really put a lot more effort into it. And I definitely don't mean if you see one coming in where it's like 2%, uh, you definitely want to put focus on that one. You don't want to drop it completely because you are getting sales from that one. But I would definitely focus on the ones that are bringing in the most and not only focus on them, but going much harder. So if you get a lot of sales from Facebook, it means going out there and going. If you're going to two different places on Facebook, try to find a third and a fourth and try to hit more of those. Uh, the next one is going to be working with your wholesale clients. If anybody out there is doing private label, white label, wholesale, if you've got clients that are ordering 10, 20, 30 at a time, 100 or 200 at a time, and you notice that they're slowing down a little bit, uh, you might offer them You might offer them different deals, such as being allowed to order smaller quantities at the same price, or even if they do order smaller quantities, you might come up with some type of a clever deal to where you're offering maybe the same amount of candles at a little bit lower cost to you. And again, this is where in previous videos where I talk where I talk about it's important to price your candles properly. If you have your candles properly priced, you're able to take an additional 25, 50 cents, 75 cents or a dollar out of each of your candle to accommodate something just like this. And I think you'll find that most private label, wholesale, white label clients are more than willing to take a little bit of a price cut. Uh, I would work it into some kind of a contract that says uh, when things do pick up, the price will go back up so that you're not stuck at the end of the recession with candles that are a dollar less than they used to be last year. Now, another one that's probably not gonna hit too many small candle makers, it's gonna hit some uh, a little bit larger candle makers, but those are people who have taken out debt for their business, capital loans or anything like that, where you're taking out a little bit of a loan to kind of help grow the business. If you do have any type of loans out there like that, it's a good idea to really focus on those. If you've got extra cash coming in, try to pay some of those down, uh, pick the smallest one or the biggest one, or if you've got one or two, three, whatever you have, pick one and pay it off as quick as possible because whatever you're paying, obviously that's money back into your pocket that you no longer have to pay monthly. So anything that you can do, if you have a $200 payment and it's got maybe $1,000 left on it or whatever it is, if you could pay that down very quickly and get it done, that's an extra $200 per month that you can basically put back towards the business. Now, another small one that people can do is not one that a lot of people want to do, especially when you get your product to a certain level 
uh, with extras such as candle care cards, extra ribbons, bows, stamping, anything like that. Those are things that you can kind of take away from your candle for a little bit. If you're offering really nice candle cards, which can cost upwards of a dollar per card, that's a dollar savings per candle. And if you're selling a hundred candles a month, that's a hundred dollars back into your pocket. The candle cards are definitely something nice. So even if you're spending a dollar on those, I would definitely say find way, find ways where you can cut those costs in half. If you can find maybe ribbons that aren't quite as much that you can use for the next couple months. If you can find candle care cards that are a little bit cheaper, definitely get into stuff like that because it will help in the long run. And you would absolutely be surprised where cutting back on a stamp or foil or ribbons, candle care cards or even special boxes can save you hundreds per month. Another one, which is a little bit harder to do, is trying to find second or third revenue streams with your business. Are there new areas that you can tap into? And this one's gonna be a little bit tougher right now because with the recession coming, a lot of people are really holding back, so you may not be able to get into new shops or new boutiques, but definitely look and see if there's anything else that you can do with your business, uh, selling supplies, selling products, uh, if you can do any type of consulting. There's all kinds of things that you can do that will bring in a little bit extra during these times. And one of the last few is definitely customer service. This is going to be an area, at, not only in general, but especially right now with everything kind of going down, customer service is going to be huge. Being able to over communicate and over deliver and really get in there and help people who are like you in need during these kind of down times, it will definitely go a very long way. And last but not least is going to be patience. Anything you can do to really hold off, uh, take things slow, uh, put your money where it needs to be. Things. These are all things that I'm absolutely trying to do right now and basically just riding this out as long as possible. This is absolutely gonna be a time where people wanna throw in the towel. They see things going down and you never know when you could be six months away, three months away, or a month away from everything starting to really go back up. So the longer that you can hold out, the more patient that you can be on holding off, like I said, on big purchases, uh, the extras that you usually throw in, basically holding back and being patient for that to come back is really going to make a huge difference. All right, so I hope that was helpful. These are just some things that I kind of came up with. Uh, a bunch of these things are things that I'm trying to do right now, even for myself. And if I missed anything, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what other people are doing to kind of get through this next year. And of course, hit the like button on the video, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.